When it comes to IBM solutions, Dynatrace stands out as a powerful and comprehensive platform. But even with such a robust tool at your disposal, developing Dynatrace apps can sometimes present challenges that developers must navigate. In this insightful video, we'll explore three common pitfalls that developers make when developing Dynatrace apps and offer solutions to overcome them. As a bonus tip, we'll unveil an additional mistake that may catch you by surprise. Let's get to it. Okay, so you have just created your first Dynatrace app project and you want to show some visualizations with data coming from Graph. You play around with DQL in notebooks and you're happy with your query. Back to the app, you use the query execution client to execute your DQL query and you get an error. Nothing to worry about though. If you carefully read the error message, you'll see that accessing table this events is not allowed. See, accessing different types of data from Grail, such as logs, metrics, or these events, like in this example, requires specific permissions to be set in the app config. So the solution is really easy. Go to the app config TS and add the required scope. But now you might be thinking, how am I supposed to know what scopes do I need? Well, you can visit the Grail documentation page where you can learn more about Grail in general and also the specific permissions required for each data type. Keep in mind that not only Grail requires permissions, also other APIs do. To check the required permissions for each API, visit the SDK's documentation page. Now that you've sorted out the DQL permissions issue, you want to fetch additional information from an external API to enrich your visualization. You are used to using fetch, so you go ahead and do something like this. The app reloads and you get another error. And this one doesn't seem very helpful. But if you open the developer console, you'll see that we have a content security policy issue. See, for security reasons, Dynatrace doesn't allow accessing third-party APIs from the UI. To do so, you must use app functions, which you can easily create with a simple command. Once you have created your app function, you just need to move your fetch logic from the UI to the app function itself and then call this app function from the UI. This is the simplest way to call app functions, but you can also use the Dynatrace SDK app utils package, which allows you to call it just by its name. Also consider that you might need to allow list your API URL to be able to use it. To learn more about these topics, you can visit the developer portal. Great, you now know how to access third-party APIs from your Dynatrace app but most APIs require some sort of authorization, right? So you just go ahead and create a .m file with your credentials. Then you install the .m package and use it in your app function. Only to realize that it doesn't quite work. The reason is that app functions run in the Dynatrace JavaScript runtime, which has restricted access to some known modules such as OS, Path, or Crypto, which are all used by this .m package you can see the full list of supported APIs in the developer portal. The solution in this case is to use app settings or the credentials vault to store your credentials. And once again, you can read more about these topics from the developer portal. Now, as promised, here's the bonus tip. Focus on the following scenario. You need to fetch some data from Grail for which you use the query execution client, just as in the first example of this video. But your query is very complex and may take some time to be finished. You must understand that once you run query execute, it triggers the query execution in the backend, allowing you to then use the query poll method to poll for the results. But you don't want to poll forever, right? As it would be a terrible user experience. For this reason, your polling logic should have a limited amount of tries. So you can politely inform the user that the query is taking longer than expected and they can try again later. But here's the catch. The backend doesn't know that you're no longer interested in the results, so the query is still executing in the backend. This may lead to some unexpected bills at the end of the month, so we should take care of it. Luckily, the solution is very simple. You just need to use a new method from the query execution client called query cancel. This method will return the results if they are already available or it will cancel the query execution otherwise. You can learn more about the query execution client from the SDK documentation page in the developer portal. And that's all I have for today. Let us know in the comments if you faced any of these issues before or any other issues that we missed. Hopefully you learned something new and won't stumble across these mistakes again or for the first time. Also remember that you can learn more about these topics from the developer portal. 
See you in the next one.